Hi there, it's Scott Nicholson from Syracuse University School of Information Studies, and welcome to session 16 in the Gaming and Libraries course. Now, today what I'm going to talk about is marketing and partnerships. One of the challenges that I've seen libraries have, and it's true for not only gaming activities but other forms as well, is that they don't market beyond their normal marketing channels. They may have a newsletter, they may have a place where they put some uh, notices in the paper, uh, but they have these channels and they're used to using these channels. And so they run a gaming program, they put some signs in the library, they put notices in their newsletter, uh, but not much else goes out from that. And the problem is, if you're running a program like gaming and one of your goals is to draw in people who don't normally come to the library, you can't just use your normal marketing channels because those haven't worked. That's why they're not coming. You have to go way outside that. And so one of the pathways to do that is to identify partnerships. You want to find, and this is, again, this is true for many other things that you're already doing in the library. So in gaming, some of the relevant partnerships are going to be, one, game shops. You want to look for both electronic and analog game shops in your area. Uh, many times these shops, the analog game shops, may be partnered with comic books. So you may want to check out your local comic book stores because a number of comic book stores are where the gamers are hanging out as well and where, where they sell games. Uh, but you want to look and see if there's any specialty board game shops or miniature shops. Um, so look for historical miniature shops. Look to see where the analog gamers go to buy product and that's where you might find some, uh, some people who might want to come to your stuff. Uh, Games Workshop is a, a chain that runs around the U.S. Make sure and check that out. And then you also want to look in digital shops. And so everything from your local Best Buy to GameStop, if you have a local buy and sell used thing, you want to check that out. So you want to identify where are gamers going to buy their stuff. And these are your first groups to partner with. These organizations have something to gain by working with you. Not only will they be able to provide you with games, that they will provide you with contacts and networking. In addition, they can help provide you with volunteers to help teach the games. We found a great partnership with the local game shop where people came out from the game shop and actually ran and demonstrated the games in the library. It was a great partnership. It really worked out well. So that's my first tip is go to your local vendors and your local shops who might have a local interest. Now you can write the national shops, you can write a national store, you can write the companies that make the games, but they're not going to have that local interest, the same local interest that your local shops will. So check out your friendly local game shops and talk to them about what you're doing. I would imagine they'll be pretty excited to figure out ways to help and that can help with donating materials, donating prizes, or donating time. Now the second groups to look for are local gaming groups. So many communities have a board game group, card game group, a Scrabble group, a chess group, uh, perhaps some video game clubs. Look at your campuses at colleges, talk to your high schools, find out where in the community the gamers are meeting. Because one thing about a lot of the analog games is they require other people to play with. You can't sit down and play most board games by yourself. So because of that, you've got these groups of people. Now, video games, you can play them by yourself, but a lot of people like to get together and have parties where they bring their equipment and network it all together. The second resource to look for are gaming clubs, whether it be both analog or digital gaming clubs. One thing about analog games is you can't play them by yourself. So because of that, board game groups, Scrabble groups, bridge groups, chess groups, these groups pop up both in public and public spaces, but also through things like Borders or through Starbucks, a lot of places where people hang out might have some gaming going on or they might go on at college campuses or high schools. You also might find some digital clubs, although they aren't as needed because you can play a video game by yourself um, and there are many online services, but most board games you can't play by yourself. You need to find other people. So find local gaming clubs and reach out to them. Invite them to come in or go visit them. Go hang out with them for the evening. You might find that these folks will be great at demonstrating a wide variety of games. If you come in with some idea of what you're looking for because you've gone through and you've done what I've explained in this, in this video so far, they're going to be very helpful in, in helping you find games and they may even have them and you can try them out. You could also talk to them about coming and helping to host. Say if you find a board game group, ask if they're willing to host a board game Saturday where the group comes, they can bring games, set them up, and engage people with those games because many of these clubs are looking to grow and this is a great way to do it. One side note about working with gamers. I need to warn you about enthusiasm. Now, a number of folks who are really engaged with games are going to be very enthusiastic about the particular types and particular titles of games that they love. And they will work very hard to persuade you that their particular game is, above all else, the absolute best thing out there and that they have a 20th level wizard that they want to tell you about. So 
One thing you have to be aware, when you're talking with people who are passionate about a specific type of game, you have to temper that with the lessons I've presented here. If someone is really liking, likes World of Warcraft and they really want to see a World of Warcraft at the library and you're wanting to run an open gaming program, well, you're going to need to work with them and explain why it is World of Warcraft, which is a very complex and expensive game, in, in a solo player experience or a group of people all sitting at computers together, that's probably not the best thing when you want a more social open environment. So this is where the structure I've given you is going to help you stick to your guns when you're working with people who are really interested in a specific type of game. Now, if you're really passionate about it and you think it will fit, perhaps you may want to allow them to craft a program idea around that game they're really passionate about. But you need to just be aware that people engaged with games will be very passionate sometimes about certain games and that you need to stick to your library mission, the goals of your gaming program, the archetypes you've checked, and the variables you've decided upon when working with folks about deciding what games to bring in for the library. You also might want to look in related spaces, spaces like bookstores and, as I mentioned earlier, coffee shops um, in your local civic centers, places where people hang out as a place to market these activities where you're going to find the gamers. Now, there's a lot of tie over between gaming and other forms of fandom, especially science fiction fandom. So the other thing to look for is, is there a Star Trek club or a sci-fi club? A lot of the people who are in that club are going to be interested in gaming as well, and these are people that you can reach out to. So what's important is that you identify your activities, you plan out a few things, and I would suggest perhaps just starting with an open gaming day because if you have an open gaming activity for a period of time, you can market that, get the message out through these groups, and get some of these groups involved in the planning because if you get a group involved in the planning, they're very likely to bring and also bring their members along. So there you're already going to have some people engaged, and they can tell their friends and so on because these things work best through word of mouth. What I find is having a regular activity helps. Having that they know the first Tuesday of every month from 5 to 9 p.m. there's going to be gaming going on at the library. That helps a lot, especially when you're working with groups because you then have something established. Also, make sure and bring in the press. Now the press, they're very interested in this topic because it's a little controversial. Gaming in the library? It's crazy! And so contact your local newspapers and television stations. Explain what's going on. Explain if, ask if you can come in and do an interview with them or if they'd like to come out to talk with you about what's going on because these folks can really help get the word out way beyond what your normal outreach. Also, look on the internet, places like Craigslist, you can actually post information up there. Uh, via Twitter and via blogs, you can talk about what you're doing. Look to where the people you want to bring in are spending their time and try to get the message out there. Now, another thing to consider is having a structure that encourages people to come regularly and to bring others. So, for example, rather than trying to come up with prizes for each gaming event, that's going to get exhausting and the people you're turning to are going to get tired of giving you prizes. It's better to collect a set of prizes and have a set of prizes go at the end of each season. This is something that Eli does, and I like the idea a lot. He has seasons that run, and so we might have a fall season that'll start in September and run through December. And every time someone comes to a gaming event, they accumulate some points. In addition, if they bring a new person, they bring a friend, they accumulate points. So that encourages them to come regularly and to bring others. And all those points then turn into drawings that they can enter. And so, for example, one model might be every 10 points gets you a ticket. You can drop the ticket in one of these bins to win one of the prizes. So that lets people compete for the prize they're the most interested in. All it takes is one ticket to win, so you want to make sure that if they even show up to one thing, they get a ticket. They have the ability to enter a drawing. If you come again and again, you get more and more tickets. If you bring people, you get tickets. So that's the idea of luring people in with tickets towards these prizes, and that gets them addicted and interested. Also, this is a metagame, so you can actually have a leaderboard up of people's names and their points and, and how often they've been, and so come up with some way of doing that. And maybe if you win tournaments, you get extra entries. But the idea that there's not a direct prize for everything they do, but instead what they're doing is accumulating points, and those points get turned into tickets at the end where they can then submit the tickets in different bins to try and win one of a number of prizes. Having the multiple bins rather than everyone in one big bin allows people to really focus on what it is they want to win the most and put the tickets towards that. But you could use the traditional structure of one big bin and all the drawings for that as well. It's really up to what you think your patrons are going to be the most interested in. Make sure and engage your friends group early. 
in the gaming process because you don't want to surprise them. You don't want to say, hey, we're doing gaming, and then you find out you have someone that's really unhappy about it. Um, next week, I'm going to talk about answering the critics, but you want to present this to not only your administration, but also your friends group early on because you may find that sitting out there in the friends group are some gamers, some people that you didn't know about who might be really interested in getting engaged. So hopefully this gives you some idea about marketing and partnerships. If you've had successful partnerships or successful ways of marketing, please go to this board and tell us about them. That's the whole purpose of this public space, to allow everyone out there to share ideas with each other. So tomorrow I'm going to talk about actually acquiring games and building a game collection. So until then, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.